We should be carrying ourselves as good stewards. Why? Because we're king's kids. Yeah. You remember in the 80s and 90s, some of you were around and say, everybody in the church would say, I'm a king's kid. What does that mean? I'm the righteousness in Christ. You had to know the scriptures. We're going to look at some before we leave. Amen? We're not, we, we're not going to say, I'm going to need you to write some of these scriptures down, and you can begin to confess them daily. Amen? And maybe honey, we can post it up so people can see. But let's look at what the enemy does. Let's look at the greatest fraud. Of all times. That's Satan. Amen. He's the greatest fraud of all times. Let's look at what his mission statement is. So you understand how he's coming at you. And what you need to uh, uh, go against. And what you need to fight. Amen. Not that I'm trying to glorify him too much. But I just want to look at it since you asked. Amen? Amen. Going to the stage. John 10 and 6. If you have it say there. Yeah. It says. Jesus told a simple story, but they had no idea what he was talking about. So he tried again. I'll be explicit. Then I am the gay. Now, no, when God says I'm, I'll be explicit, that I means he's getting ready to be real and straightforward. Do you hear me? Young people, when, when, a, when an album says, I'm, I'm learning this because I, um, I do cycle classes now. Sometimes I have a song that I like. I may be in a grocery store and I hear a song because I don't really listen to secular music. So I may be in the grocery store. I hear a song. I'm like, what's that? Somebody tells me what that song is and I try to use it for my cycle class. Now, what I didn't realize is I'm hearing the clean version. How many know what I'm talking about? But when I get on iTunes, they have the song be there about three different times and they have this like E on there. And I didn't know, what does that E mean? So you know what pastor did, right? I click on the song. Oh, ooh. That's not the song I heard. Click on another one that has the ooh. And have all the explicit ones up first. I'm like, man, well, that's not the song. That's not the artist I heard. Click on another, ooh. Didn't know I had to scroll down. Because I was like, I can't use that. I can't bleep that out. So I can turn it down. And I can't do, hmm, what happened? And then I see the one that says clean version. Radio edited version. Remember when all we had was radio edited growing up? That's all we had. Remember when the message, the message was, 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 was borderline, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. <laughs> it's like a jungle sometimes. <laughs> Makes me wonder what it keep from going under. That was, that was considered like, ooh, explicit. Real. Talked about how they were urinating on the subways and how you had to go to jail and you had to be an undercover hag. Are you with me? Explicit. Well, J Jesus is saying this good. I'm going to be explicit. So this, is a, to whisper, this is the explicit version. Whisper to somebody. Come on, tell them this is the explicit version. This is the explicit version. Get ready. Get ready. It's not going to be like a hip hop song. His explicit is going to be very direct. And to the point, he says, I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. They're sheep stealers, every one of them. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Notice when he used that, that, that together, I am, he's saying Jehovah. Back then, they, that was real serious business because the Jews weren't even allowed to say it. They had to whisper it. And they didn't even say the whole word. They didn't pronounce that right. They were just, oh, yeah, over. Oh, wow. Because they had that honor and respect. 
They didn't use God's name in vain. So he says, he says, I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for. Now, this is about knowing who you are. If you come through the gate of Jesus, if you say Christ come into my life, you're entering the gate. You get this. We'll be cared for. Now, what does it mean that you're going to be cared for? Talk to me. What does it mean? Red one, if you can give me some mic. What? God would be your source and supply. He's going to take care of you. Right? What else? What does it mean to be cared for? Lexus, you had your hand up? Anybody? Anybody? I'm sorry. You're stretching. Nourishment. So nourishment and training, Vanetta says, like you like the birds in the air, they're, they're being they're nourished by God. They're trained by God. They know instinctively because the Father shows them what they need to do. They know at winter time I need to fly south. Nobody told them they just get woo, woo, woo. Are y'all with me? He says. You'll be careful. We'll freely go in and out and find pasture. But notice this. A thief, the thief, who's the thief? Satan, right? Is only there to what? Steal, kill, kill, and destroy. I came so that they can have real and eternal life and more and better life than ever dreamed of. And the King James says, and life more abundantly. Life more abundantly, full of everything. It's not God's will that you're struggling. Did you hear me? Did you, did you hear me? It's not God's will that you're struggling. The first thing, one of the key things you have to realize in Christ is finding out who you really are. Are you with me? When you find out who you are, the struggles become lighter. Because you know they're just for a season. Because I'm daddy's son. I'm daddy's daughter. Are y'all with me? When you're, see, when you understand that God has promised you healing and divine health, you understand that if you get sickness in your body, all you have to do is, Lord, what do I need to do? Make the adjustments to his word and how you're supposed to treat your temple. And then guess what? God will bring what? God will bring what? Healing. healing. So when I was diagnosed of being borderline with high blood pressure, if they say some doctor says no borderline, that's a lie from the pit. Either you have it or you don't. Had a choice. I keep praying over my food and eat salty stuff and be like, Lord, just bless it. You said you're purified. Uh, you know, these Lay's potato chips, they're too good to give up. Every good and perfect gift come from God. Or go to McDonald's and say, put some extra salt in them fries. Or I can say, you know, just give them to me the, how you normally have them, which are salty. Finished eating, my eyes all red. My wife looking at me like, what's wrong with you? Are you with me? Because sodium. But guess what? I'm believing God for healing. No, I had to begin to educate myself in, my, in the word about my temple and understand that sodium causes a bad reaction with the temple of God because it dehydrates the body. And then I began to look at the back of different labels and seeing that there's sodium in all these things that I don't need, processed foods. So instead of buying canned goods, I start canned vegetables, I started buying frozen vegetables. And even with that, I had to watch out because it's so. So I said, okay, I can't stay with frozen vegetables. I got to get what? Fresh vegetables. That means I got to cook them. I can't just leave them in there. For two weeks. What happened? You leave that fresh stuff in there for about a week. It spoils. But you can leave a canned good in there for two a year. <laughs> and it still tastes good because it's filled with salt. So I thought it tastes good, but it's really hurting me. You know what? If I'm eating poison and it's killing me, do I keep eating the poison and ask God to heal me? Or do I take the poison out my diet and repent 
and ask God to heal me. Which one seems more sincere? When you know who you are, then you know what you have. And you know what? What you can do. The enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. He came that you might have life. Let's look at who we are in Christ. Are y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? Let's look at who we are in Christ. This is your identity. God has no respect of person. He does have a respect of faith. See, when the devil messes with my children, I remind myself of who the word says I am. I'm his child. Did you hear me, church? I'm his child. Let's look at this. I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Now, who's he? Colossians 2 and 10. He's talking about Jesus, right? I mean, I'm complete in him. Everything that I need, I have that pertains to what? Life and godliness. I'm complete in him. You got to remind yourself. You're not complete because you have a, a spouse. You're not complete. See, single people have to get this. You're not complete because some, no, you have to be whole before God sends somebody else because he wants two wholes come together, not two halves. You are complete. Everybody say, I am complete in him. Come on, say it like you mean it. I am complete in him. Let's keep going. Say, I am alive with Christ. See, that means you're not called to walk in that dead nature. See, when you say that you are alive in Christ, like it's speaking of Ephesians, he talks about put off the old man. The old man where you were lying and cheating and being greedy. No, no, you're putting all of that off and you're becoming alive in new life, which is Christ. Amen? Thirdly, I am free from the law of sin and death. Come on, say, I am free from the law of sin and death. What's the law of sin and death? Who knows what the law of sin and death is? That means I don't have to willfully sin anymore. It's a choice. And now I have the power to break that choice of doing the same thing over again. This is the, the biggest thing where the enemy gets people that struggle in addiction is he makes them feel like they don't have a choice. People say, Pastor, I just, always, I just got to do it. I've seen people doing well, free from addiction, two years, sometimes three years. They'll come to me and say, Pastor, I just, you know, it's like they have to feel like they have to sabotage the good thing that God is doing. Because they haven't realized that I'm free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8 and 2. And Romans 8 and 1 is just as important. Right before it, hopefully you're getting it, it says, guess what? Therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. See, if you don't, if you're flowing in condemnation, you won't have the reality that you're free from the law of sin and death. Because condemnation deals with shame and despair and thinking that you're not worthy. But the truth is you really aren't worthy, but Christ is worthy. And because he's worthy and he's died for your sin, guess what? Now you received him in your life, so the life that he has becomes your life. That's something to praise God about. I thought I'd be praising God about that. That's your life now. I'm assuming that you're writing. That's why you didn't do that. Amen. I am far from oppression. Say that. Come on. Yeah. Let's read number four together. I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. Some of, you, some of us, we walk around so scared about everything. What if this happens? And what if that happens? And what if this? I, what does it say? I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. Isaiah 54 and 14. See, you, you understand what you don't know will hurt you? See, you understand why you have to know this word of God? I hear people say, well, Pastor, I don't know this word like you know the word, but you got to know the word. You got to get in this word for yourself. You can't go by what grandma taught you. You got to get in the word for yourself. Number five, let's read it together. I am born of God and the evil one does not touch me. 1 John 5 and 18. How many know you're born of God? Say it again. I'm born of God. I like how that feels. I'm born of God. Hallelujah. 1 Peter talks about how God put his uncorruptible seed on inside of you. His seed. His, 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 another translation is his sperm is inside of you. Has impregnated you with life. His seeds inside of you. Ah, the 
born of God. He said, I, whatever soul is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. You're born of God. Six, read it with me. I am holy and without, let's start over. I am holy and without blame before him in love. You know, I hear people say sometimes, and especially when their addiction is talking. Instead of dealing with their addiction and their hurt, I've heard this over and over. They'll say, people is judging me. People is judging me. Now, let me tell you something. When you get a real revelation of Christ, it doesn't matter what people say. See, let me tell you something, men and women of God. I wouldn't feel free to share anything about my life up here. If I didn't understand, number six, that I'm holy without blame before him in love. Because people judge you all the time. You know, I can see some of your faces. Sometimes I'm talking about something I did in the past. And I see some of y'all, y'all first you're smiling and you're like. You may whisper, but I ain't stunned it. You know why? Because number six right here, I am holy and without blame before him in love. But when you don't know that, your own guilt is tearing you up. So you want approval from men and women, which you always going to be going to find somebody that's going to disapprove you. Am I making sense? But when I say it's under the blood, how many know it's under the blood? So I can tell you about what I used to do because that's under the blood. Seven, you ready? I have what? The mind of Christ. Christ. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Foundation. Hey, this is something to shout about. You know, this is something to get on the drums and get going for it. Amen? I have the mind of Christ. You know, when you have the mind of Christ, you're not stuck on stupid. Even when you want to do stupid stuff, you can't do it. I don't know what I'm talking about. You're stuck on, you can't, you, you, God doesn't allow you to get stuck on stupid. That's when you talking about when you have the mind of Christ. Are you with me? You're not going to just go, I mean, how many, you know, how many are, are shoppers? How many are shoppers? Now, when the Holy Spirit begins to deal with you and he starts dealing with you about getting out of debt, can you just go shop like you used to? Tell the truth. It ain't even fun anymore, is it? I'm a shopper. It ain't fun anymore. Because you know if God put a plan in your life and you're trying to do it, because you know that your decision is holding up the plan. I mean, I don't care how many excuses you give. Well, you know, it was a sale and I had to get it. Are you with me? You know, whatever you compromise to get, you ultimately lose, right? What's another one? Shoppers is one, but what, what else? Come on. Talk to me, Pastor T. Alexis, uh, uh, um, Ariana, please hand me, hand me my phone right there, please. Um, what's a, let's, let's look at the next one. Set, uh, eight. I have, I have the peace. Of, come on. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Some understanding? A little understanding? Pastor, I just don't have any peace. Now, the word of God says you have peace. What have you allowed to steal your peace? See, my next question to you, whenever you tell me, I, don't have, I just don't have peace. I say, well, what's bothering you? I get in my question mode because I know what the word says. The Bible says you have peace. But you don't have peace now? That means somewhere you put something ahead of God. And so what I want to do as a good pastor, I'm going to ask the right questions so you can see it. Because if I just told you what you were doing, well, you know, you have this. Most people that in this generation will say, well, you can't tell me. I've had people say, Pastor, just tell me. Tell me what's wrong. Just tell me what's wrong. If you tell me, I'll do it. Then I tell them, okay, well, you know, if you want to, okay, this is what I see is wrong. Well, that's not it. (laughs) Are you judging me? But you just ask me, you just beg me to tell you. Just tell me, just tell me I listen. I listen. They made me, at first they look like, oh yeah, right. And I went, oh, I went home that night. That's not it. 
And I'm thinking to myself, well, why did you ask? You begged me. So what I've learned in these day and time, I just ask the questions to help them get to the truth. Are you with me? Because a fool is not going to re receive the truth. Just if it's just coming directly from me. So I learned to just ask the right questions. So what made you feel like this? Were you feeling like this before you did that? Well, is it a chance that maybe what you did between this point and that point is what made you feel the way you are? So maybe that stole your peace? You're right. Man, I'm glad I figured that out, Pastor. I'm glad you did too. Nah, you ready? Come on, read it with me. I have the. This is important. Say it. Is I have the greater one living in me. Greater is he who is in me than he is in the world. That's important. I have the greater one. Turn to somebody and say there's greatness inside of you. Do you understand that? See, your situation may be lying to you, but you got to know. I'm going to tell you, husband and wife, you got to forget. Sometimes we start forgetting that there's greatness inside of us. Because you get familiar, you're sleeping next to greatness. Some of you need to just turn to your spouse when you get home. So you know you're sleeping next to greatness. <laughs> greater ones inside of me. Are you with me? The greater one, you sitting beside greatness. Turn to someone and say, you sitting beside greatness. You sitting beside greatness, Ariana. Are you with me? The greater one's on the inside of me. You got to know. See, now some of you blush when you say that because you don't understand. It's not about you. It's about him. You representing him. You really don't see yourself as a representative of him. Moses, what school you go to? Altitude. So every time you walk in Altitude, greatness is walking through the door. Tariq, what school you go to? E.C. Booth? E.T. Booth? So every time Tariq walks to the door at school, guess what? Greatness is what? Taylor, what school you go to? North Cobb High. <laughs> Aqua Warriors. A little partial toward them. So every time Taylor walks through the door, whether it be half day or whole day, there's greatness on the side of you. Yeah. Lily, where you work at? Metro Medical Training Center. Every time you walk through the door of Metro Medical Training Center, greatness is walking through the door. Do you understand that? Hey, Seth, where you work at? Elanders. Elanders. What, printing company or just Elanders printing? Every time he walks through the door, oh, guess what? Greatness is walking through. Leroy, where you work at? Wellstar. Every time he walks through the doors of Wellstar, every facility that he's going to, as he's delivering packages, guess what? He goes, hey, wait, wait. Greatness is coming in. <laughs> Pop Sanders, what you do? Where you work at? You're retired. So every time he walks through his house, goes to the post office, goes to Publix, works in the garden, greatness is working. Amen. Amen. I want you to get in your spirit that you're walking in greatness. Say, I'm walking in greatness. Walking in greatness. Amen. Hallelujah. When you know who you are, you know what you have, and you know what you can do. Say it with me. When you know, you know what you can do. You see, you walk in that company like you own that company. I'm talking about be humble now, but just know I'm in here. This thing is blessed, come on, because I'm here. This whole place is blessed. Oh, you boy, it would have fell down years ago, but boy, you hired me, and this place is blessed because I'm here. Mike, where you work at? Angels Linens. Angels Linens is blessed because you there. Greatness walking through the door. You the hardest working person there. Are you with me? Greatness. Tomorrow, where you work at? State of Georgia. Oh, state of Georgia, blessed. Red state, blessed. Because they got Namario working there. Do you, are y'all with me? Get that in your psyche. Let's keep going. What's the next one? Come on, read it with me. The gift of righteousness and reign as king in life by Jesus Christ. Do you understand you got to get the, what does it mean to have to get the righteousness? Somebody talk to me. Come on, first part, you already thought what it is. You waiting for somebody else to say it. Say it. Don't worry about your answers on answers. Say it. What does it mean? 
to be in right standing with God. Go ahead, ASAP. He gave me his perfect reputation. He gave me his, well, y'all both hitting it. Right, that's a one-two punch right there. Right standing of God. Perfect reputation. Come on. Bam, bam. I'm, the right, I'm in right standing with God. That means I can stand before him and stand with him. And now, then I got his reputation. I can walk out with his rep, with my chest up. Are y'all with me? What else? Anybody else got a definition for righteousness? That's it right there. Amen? Well, I'll keep it there. It's, it's so much more right standing with God. That means, guess what? You're his representative. You have his reputation. You have his authority. You have his authority. Jesus spoke to sickness and commanded to leave. He spoke to the wind and commanded to be for peace there. Many times, we, we, we live in what you call Tornado Alley, right there on the Ackworth, Cherokee, and Cobb, I mean, Cobb County, Cherokee line, Ackworth and Woodstock, and them hurricanes come through there. And I'll never forget, I stayed up all, one, all night and said, Lord, peace around this house. Peace around this house. Peace around it. My neighbor fence was taken. Tree fell on the house next to me. This one, and they all woke up and said, why didn't nobody touch, nothing touch your house? Are you with me? Yeah. Pleading the blood of Jesus over my house and peace be with this house. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Number 11. Come on, we got one more. And I'm wrapping it up. What's number 11? Come on, let's say that one more time. I receive spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus and the eyes of my understanding is being enlightened. I have received the gift. I mean, the spirit of wisdom. Now, what's wisdom? I taught it. Someone else. What's wisdom? You can be last week. What's wisdom? Quickly, you got it. Say it again. Knowledge. Is it knowledge? So he said, he said, to respect God Almighty. Now, of who he is. Now, what I'm going to say with that is, that's the beginning of wisdom. Because the Bible says, the, what, you, what, my, what Pop Sanders just described was the fear of God. The fear of God, the Bible says in Proverbs, is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have the foundation of the fear of God, that God is in control, he is sovereign, and he's running things. So I better listen to him. That's called the fear of God. And so in order to get wisdom, if you don't have that, you'll just have knowledge. Wisdom is the rightly, rightly godly application of knowledge. So it's the godly. So it, it's the tree of life versus the tree of good and evil. The tree of good and evil has knowledge. And that's just there. Are y'all with me? Knowledge. How to do say Google has knowledge. Right? I can say, do you know about the sassafras tree? And you can say, yeah, I do. Get on your phone. Yeah, that tree is. Are, are you with me? I can say, do you know about the sycamore tree? Yeah, I do. That's a tree that uh, the, the, the disciple Matthew was on. He was looking at, are you with me? That's knowledge. I can say, do you know about uh, uh, the C++ language and computer science? You can go C++ computer science. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, that's the language that they're using for program. Are you with me? You can cheat and get knowledge, but do you know how to apply it? That comes from godly wisdom testimony was I'm, I'm gonna put Taylor on blast I know she hates it but she gotta get used to it anyway because guess what when you have Christ in your life you're gonna be put in the forefront but you just like your mama your mama don't like it when I put her up there right so you know how that is so you just a little Vanetta 
But she was working at the show yesterday and they were commenting on about how fast she was taking that money. Are you with me? See, you doing that, that's important because everybody's not fast in getting money. And I'm going to say that speaks of you go what's going to happen prophetically in your life. If you keep them first, you're going to be fast. You may not have all the education that others have, but you'll have the diligence to get where God wants you to get. And you'll see open doors. God will open doors for you that you didn't think you can open. See, now I just use it for example, and then God starts giving me a word to prophesy over you because I'm using you for an example. But you may not want me to use you, but I'm using you. And God's giving you a word that he's going to bless you in spite of you. Amen. And so he's going to give you wisdom and you're going to see other people. They're going to have a whole bunch of education and they've been doing this long or their families may have more money than you. But you're going to be just getting it because you're going to get it fast because God's giving you wisdom. That's what wisdom will do for you. You may not have the right pedigree or the right lineage or may not been exposed to this or that. That's all right. When you have wisdom, God, with your faith, will pave a way for you that you can even make for yourself. And you'll be looking at it and all you can say is two words. But God. Or Jesus Christ, whatever. But two words. But God. I mean, I have so many but God situations in my life. I'm like, oh my. But God. Looking at my first check in business, broke $40,000. All I could say was, but God, but God, but God, but God. But God. And so when you have wisdom, God will give you some but God moments. Walk through, I remember when I walked through my house at age, how are we, 30 when we bought our house? Yeah, 30, 98, 29. Walking through our house, I'm like, but God, but God, but God. But God, I know I'm not supposed to be in a four-bedroom. Uh, but God. Coming straight out the mission field. Yeah, gave, up, gave up working at IBM. She gave up working at Honeywell. To be in full-time ministry, anywhere making from $500 to $1,000 a month, when we could have been making $80,000 to six figures. Ten years in that, working with the lowest of the lowest people across the nation that people had forgotten, and some people in some instances called the untouchables in America, the permanent underclass, loving on them, giving them the love of Christ, leading them to the Lord. Come back into our field and but God. Put us back. God put her at Coke right where she would have been if she had never left. Put me in business broken in real estate, making the money like I had never left the field. But God. People say, there's no way you can be out of a, a workforce for 10 years and come back and just snap back in and expect to be where you are. But God. See, now here, God has not a respect of person. I'm bragging on my God now, but he is a respect of faith. And you got the same ability to believe in him the same way I believed in him. And if you apply your faith the same way, guess what? You will get the same results. Amen? Amen. You'll get a but God. Come on, let me finish up. 11 verse. I Are you getting something out of this? I, have, I received a spirit of wisdom. What's revelation? What's revelation? Revelation in what? In the knowledge of Jesus. Not just revelation, but what does it mean when, 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 when what word is in revelation? Reveal. Reveal. Thank you, honey. Jesus has revealed himself to you. Jesus loves everybody, but he hasn't revealed himself to everybody. He's revealed himself to you. Knowledge of Jesus. So what? The eyes of my understanding. How many know you got natural eyes and you got spiritual eyes? See, I don't know about you, when, I, when my eyes and my understanding were opened, when I got in my 68 Camaro with the fellas, and they say, let's go get high, couldn't get high anymore. Because the eyes of my understanding were opened. And they said, oh, let's go to the club. I tell the picture at the time when I went to the club after I got saved, and I had gotten filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, man, that old. Getting saved was one thing, then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Ghost, I couldn't, some, I couldn't do what I used to do. I remember I tried to go to the club like I normally do, and I just heard the Holy Spirit talking to me. Why are you walking? He said, well, look around here. And then the Holy Spirit was talking to me in questions. I said, what, Lord? He said, why is it dark in here? Well, I said, Lord, you know why it's dark in here. What you getting ready to do? 
What you thinking about? What they thinking about over there on that wall? What else? I don't know what they thinking about. You know what they thinking about. Are you with me? I didn't have the peace because my eyes of my understanding had been opened. Much like I'm talking about when you go shopping, you know better not to get it when you're on a tight budget. You know you don't need to be walking in that store. Well, I'm just going to look. You know you can't look when you got them cards in your pocket. You ain't leave them home. And you sad too. What do shoppers do when they're feeling sad? Talk to me. Shop. So the way you get around that, you know what I do if I'm feeling sad? I just put that wallet, leave them cards at home, and go window shopping. Yeah. Try them on. Okay, I'll see you back in about another two months when my change comes. You said, Pastor, that don't really work. Yes, it do. I laid my hands on that outfit. I said, they'll be back here 50% off in Jesus' name. And I go out and I tell my wife, I just saw this for so many dollars. But it's going to be half of that. So can I get it when it's half of that? Pastor T said, well, that first price is off. But that half of that, yeah, well, you can, you can, we can afford that. And guess what? I come back and it's half of that. Amen? God does. That's what you call supernatural shopping. Now, let me tell you something. I'm giving you an example of, I was talking to Brother Leroy, right? We're talking about the, the new UHF TVs. You know what I'm talking about? Is that, am I calling them right? High def TVs, the new high def TVs with the curved screen. I want one of those things. I don't like that price right now. So I remember when they were 2000 I go in because I wanted at least a 65 inch. At least. 70 inch. I'm, I've been, I passed the go. I went two months ago. I looked at them, laid hands on one when they won't look in, just laid hands. And I think Lee would say, well, they had 1,000. What, well, you told me it was 1,000 now? 900. I said, well, that's not it. I need, I need six. Did I say five or six? Someone pay me. I think I said six or five. I can't remember. But I said, I, that, that's, that's my suite. And, and you say, well, yeah, I'm going to wait till I get there. It's going to have all the features that I want. And it's going to be a Samsung. A amen? amen? And so when it gets there, that's, what I'm, that's when I'm going to get it. Are, are you with me? And it ain't going to be a long time because I'm believing God. I'm just, somebody's going to go out of business. Something's going to happen. Yes. I don't know. I know we had, when we got ready to get our car, our van, I said, I want to buy, buy a used one, Lord, because I don't, you know what? I don't want no car payment. Well, guess what? We went to, the, and I'm going to close with this. I want no car payment. We were planning the church at the time. So how I look, we're going to be bringing on new debt. I understand, I'm trying to show the church it's not about having new stuff. I want them to understand that they need to get out of debt. And, and so I was like, you know, I'm not trying, but the, but the van transmission went out. And I was like, man. It was left in Virginia, so we had to get around when we were here. And so we make a long story short. My wife said, why don't we just believe God for one? We believe God for everything else. You believe God for this person, that person. Believe God for the church. You can believe God for thousands. I said, yeah, we can. So I was like, start praying and start believing God for it, Amen. Look, make a long story short, uh, all the vans I saw that looked nice were like 24000 and more. It just so happened that we saw our van, the one that we have now, it was put on, it was a $24,000 van, but it was 14000 on the internet. They were trying this new service, but they put it on the internet and they typed it in wrong. I printed it out. And I said, I see this thing for 40000 Man, I said, you can't see this thing because we're changing it right now. I said, I see this. He said, well, if you come in, bring your sheet of paper, then we'll honor the price that's shown on your screen. It was all the way in Lawrence, uh, Swanee. Oh, up in Swanee. I said, well, you know, that's a long way for me to be coming. It's a gimmick. Don't be trying to get me up here because if you get here, I'm going to report you to the Better Business Bureau and I probably could dial 911 when we get there. <laughs> Just, you know, playing on the phone to see what he would say. He said, no, no, this is real serious. It's legitimate. We are Chrysler, so-and-so named the company. We are the, a main dealership up here and we'll honor if you have the advertisement. I said, alloy rims? Alloy rims. Power, you know, uh, t t it was the latest model. We're in 2005. It was going into, we're in December. This is 2006. That's 2006. I said, really, I wanted to, well, if you, I said, if you give it to me, now this is me. This is flesh talking, because so I started doubting myself. How many of you you start doubting yourself? So I started saying, well, you know what? Even if you give me a 2005, I'll be all right, but I want this price. 
He says, no, sir, we'll honor what's on the sheet. So we get there. She says 2006. I said, well, let me see you 2005. See, 2005, they're higher than this price on the sheet. That's 17, 18. The one I had was, 20, was 24,000, 2006. I said, well, let me go back to you. Th- let me see the one on the sheet. He showed me the one on the sheet. He said, this is 2006. Do you see the price tag on it, right? 24 something. I said, yeah, I see that price tag, but you said you're going to honor the sheet. So I am going to honor the sheet. We operate in integrity. Are you with me? I said, well, let me look at the 2005 one more time just to make sure, because I'm thinking in my mind, this may not work out. I may have to settle for this. Are you with me? He said, sir, you can waste time doing this, or we can just go ahead and sign you out for this 2006 at the price that you have. Are y'all with me? Make a long story short, so they, of course, they had the tax tax, 2,500 drive out. It goes up to about 16. Dial 16.5. They're trying to get it to 19. I said, no, I want 2,500 drive out or I'm leaving. They said, well, sir, you got this feature on here, this feature, that. Take it off. Well, sir, we can't take it off. It came with the factory. We can't take it. We, I said, well, your sheet says this, 14,000. It has this, this 14, it has alloy rims, has this, this, this. I, if you can't take it off, I, I need to get it. Well, we got to go talk to somebody, sir. Well, go talk. Get them. Get them quickly. They said, don't talk to the middle person. Get to the top person. Go and ask them so we can get and make the decision. Go ask the, well, meanwhile, we're praying. All, now, no, no, every time they're going out, we're praying. <laughs> we grabbing hands. Lord, in Jesus' name. And this one, we, don't know, we really don't have a way to get back. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to take whatever they give us. But we're not blood. We dress nice. We, we acting like we have all day. Make a long story short, they come back and say, sir, we're going to do it. We're gonna, we decide we're going to honor our word. Yeah. I didn't think he was going to do it, but you know what? You're going to get your 16.5 or whatever, whatever, it would drive out. Yeah. I said, hurry, right, okay, give me the paper. I'm going to sign them things quick before they change their mind. <laughs> Are you with me? Because we had God's wisdom, we had his understanding, we had his revelation, and we had his enlightenment. Yeah. Last one. Are you ready for it? Are, are you ready for the last one? Let's read this last one. I have received the power of the Holy Spirit, lay hands on the sick, and see them recover, to cast out demons, to speak with new tongues, to have power over all of the enemy. And nothing shall, let's say it again, I have power over all the power of the enemy. Now, that is important. Let's say it one more time. I have power over over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm me. Amen? Mark chapter 16. That's important to know that. Amen? You have the power. You don't have to wait the church to get the power. They come to church to get the power. You have the power as a believer. People say, other pastors will say, no, don't tell the people that, because then they won't think they need you. No, we always need agreement. But isn't it good to know that if sickness comes in your household, you can say in the authority of Jesus' name, sickness, get out of my house? When you see the devil messing with your kids, aren't you glad to know that you have the power to say, devil, get off of my son, get off of my daughter in the name of Jesus? Aren't you, don't you, aren't you glad to know that the Bible says you have the power to create wealth? So when you see poverty and debt trying to creep in in your household, you can say, uh, uh, debt demon, get out of my house. In the name of Jesus? You don't have to wait for anybody. You have the authority. You have the power. We're not building a priesthood. This is not the the, the Catholic church. And you see many of the Pentecostal and the non-denominational are starting to build bishoprics and priesthood and hierarchy where you have to go to that person and this person to get blessed. What happened to you hearing from God and just obeying God and doing what the word says? Because the word says it. Flesh will complicate it every time. But God says keep it simple. Asap doesn't have to call me if he wants to go witnessing. Go witnessing. You don't have to call me if you want to go feed the hungry. My God, get get in your kitchen, cook some spanking hamburgers, or go to McDonald's and buy some hamburgers if you can't cook because I don't want you to kill anybody. And give them a cheeseburger and say, this cheeseburger is given to you in the name of Jesus. Mick, chew it now. 
Are you with me? Walk, on what, walk out on what God's called you to do. If you see somebody that needs a jacket and they're under a bridge and it's cold outside and you know it's cold, going to be cold tonight because of cold front and you have an extra jacket in your house, you go take that extra jacket and find somebody that really needs it. Not somebody that's going to sell it for some alcohol but that's going to use it. Ask God to direct you and you take it and give it to that person. Amen? That's what that's about. Amen? We got many more. So what we got to do is we got to realize who we are in Christ. When we know what we have, when we know who we are, we know what we have, then we know what we can do. One more time. When we know who we are, we know what we have, then we know what we can do. Stand to your feet, everybody. Give God some praise. Come on. Stand to your feet, everybody. We started in the morning service, and we kept on going, and we're wrapping it up now. Amen? Amen. Let's ask God. To me, I feel like on this Palm Sunday, God drenched us in the word. He drenched us in the word. And he wanted to make sure we understood what this day was about. It's a family reunion for the believers. Amen? You know, on the first day of the family reunion, only the people that are really serious come. The second day, you know, is the picnic. Everybody come to the picnic. That's what Easter is. Are you, are you with me? That's that second day of the picnic. You understand what I'm saying? But the banquet, everybody don't come to the banquet on Friday night because they got to dress up. Everybody don't want to suit. They don't want to come. Some people are going to go meet at the club and get with the older folk later. Are you with me? Palm Sunday is that Friday night. First day of family reunion. It's God getting his church, his members together saying, you know what? I'm coming and I'm here. Prepare the house for me. The word today, church, is God is coming. God is here. Get the house ready. Get here early next week, saints. We're going to do the Easter egg hunt strategically. Amen? The Easter egg hunt is not for you. It's for the community. Put that in your kids' mindset. Yes. Can they be a participant in it? Yes. But invite their friends. Invite family. Let them know we have an Easter egg hunt. There will be a digital uh, flyer online. Amen? You can get it off of Facebook or we'll have it by email. Request it to us by email. You can send it. You can show people on your phone. You can text it to them and let them know, okay, this is you, an event that we're doing. We would love for you to come. Amen? Amen. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Let's raise your, everybody raise your hands to God.